has mankind hesitated to eradicate the creatures that stand in the path of this conquest? If we find ritual extirpation of undesirable from another world, the rest must be destroyed. Is it possible that our dark past Watch them and pray. Goo readings, ladies, gentlemen, government agents, suckers who didn't think to download their college textbooks illegally, and anyone who might be listening. This is Close Encounters of the Podcast Kind. I'm your host, Tasker, and we have Nick. Under the sea. Under the sea. Copyright claim. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Up Lawsuit. on the shore, they work all day. Out in the sun, they slave away. That's racist. They slave away. And he's supposed wow. to be like Caribbean, right? <laughs> Come on, man. This is Disney in like the 90s. Oh, like, you yeah. think they gave a shit about any of that? <laughs> That's true. They barely give a shit about... now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just, you just have to pretend to. Yeah, they have to pretend to to appease the Chinese audiences. Yep. Yeah, well, for that sweet, sweet Chinese dollar. And um, yeah, yeah. And Russian dollars too, probably. Whatever, man. I don't want their. I don't want the Russians. What do they have over there? Uh, uh, what do they pay with bottle caps like Fallout? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on over there. Although I do know in China, um, they use fortune cookies as currency. I don't think that's a thing at all. Did you know that fortune cookies were actually invented in the U.S.? See, China just steals everything from us, man. <laughs> oh my god, that's horribly untrue. I think actually ninety percent of things in America have a made in China like uh, stamp or whatever. I'm so sick of it too. What happened to <laughs> what happened to? I bought. A, I have a Ford. I have a Ford car because uh, although maybe all the parts are made in China, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> but at least it's stamped to be an American car. What happened to the days? Where in the 50s, where you you pay a lot of money in 50s money for one appliance made in America. It could be like a fucking batter beater. It could be a microwave. Yeah. But it lasts. Why? Because red-blooded, bleeding-hard Americans built it, <laughs> not a bunch of rinky-dink goddamn Orientals <laughs> over there in them sweatshops. Well, the, oh, and I think and that's the problem there. The problem isn't their ethnicity. The problem is that it's literal child labor and actually enslaved people. Like, you know, they're not really – They there's a hard – it's hard to get motivated to make a good product when you're pay, being paid, like, the equivalent of two cents in American money to get it done in, like, a day. That's a lot of money to them, dude. It's not. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> Wow, that's a terrible way to start off our summer-ending beach bash <laughs> episode about Atlantis. Are you ready for the summer? <laughs> Are you ready for the sunshine? Oh, speaking of which, this is like a little off the. Uh, but you, you want? Let me let me start a new segment right here. Of you, know what pissed me fucking off today? Oh no, what was it? You know what fucking just set me in a in you know red spiral was I was you know going through the LA traffic like I usually do. And there was a billboard. Um, the Got Milk campaign is starting up again. No, oh. now that's that's not the problem. The problem is they they the phrase they use was the original sports drink. Got milk? Milk? When the fuck has any fucking sport athlete had milk at practice? That is what the fuck? Like, yeah, maybe you want to shit yourself while running around. I, I don't even get, have like, I don't even have lactose intolerance, but I know there's a lot of people who do. And what, the, who the fuck has milk when they work out or compete for the Olympics? That's like, it doesn't even work. Imagine, imagine if you will, a football game. Okay. Yeah. Now I don't know how football works. Never. I will never claim to. I don't know. And I don't know how far a yard is. I'm going to guess they run. Let's say <laughs> somebody sprints like 50 yards, gets a touchdown or a basket or whatever. Okay. Right. <laughs> the, the whole team's cheering him on. He's out of breath. He runs back to the benches and he's like, give me my milk. <laughs> just can you just imagine like chugging one of those down and you go back to where you just feel it sloshing uh, around in you and stuff like, you know, warm. Yeah, that shit's like heavy. I feel like you just throw it up. Like that's a so yeah, got milk. What the fuck is wrong with you? And like got milk is a government campaign to like subsidize something about like pawning off milk as much as they can because like there's a surplus or some shit. That's why that's the whole campaign. Like it's yeah. true, true. 
It is government, but the problem with the Got Milk campaign is they're trying to peddle and push milk onto the American citizens because milk has uh, is a high in what? Uh, uh, what calcium? mineral? Calcium. And what oh does calcium do? <laughs> it calcifies it your goddamn your third, eye, yeah. third eye. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Go ahead and drink your milk. Wow. I can't believe that my, like... Unrelated tangent actually got really related. I, I that's why I don't drink milk, man. Look, <laughs> I've never drank milk. My, my mom, when she used to try and breastfeed me, I used to slap it away. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, wasn't into it. I, I I came out eating Slim Jims and drinking beer. That's what you, I do. You hate milk so much it made you an ass man. I yes, exactly. Now I'm more of a chocolate man. That's gross. That's gross. Um, that's fucking nasty. I don't think I'm an ass man anymore. Yeah, you're not. Nick is now actually taking off his "I eat ass" T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my bro science. Shout out to bro science. My pole sumo eat ass tank top. Yeah. Oh man, we just learned so much about you every single episode. I don't even think it's intentional. It's not. It just keeps. It just comes flowing out because you bring up something that reminds me of something, and I get all triggered. Now, <laughs> two things before we move on, real quick. When you right. brought up got milk, yeah. I thought I thought of an ingenious thing where we should we should because I don't know if got milk is copyrighted. Yeah. So what we could do is we could start a milking table company uh, called Got Milk, and we'll sell milking tables. I see. Yeah. If, if you're a first time listener, uh, this is a subject that has come up a couple times in our episodes before of a, a milking table, which um, which is, it is, in fact, meant for humans. And mm. in, it is a table in which the uh, the human male lays down and uh, lets his uh, dick stick out through a hole. So that way someone can go under the table and, you know, jerk it off like a goat or a cow. You know, it's yeah, awesome. Exactly. It's milking. You know, <laughs> it sounds fucking great. <laughs> you know, when people think of merch for a podcast, they think of T-shirts. But we're 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 entrepreneurs. We <laughs> want to <laughs> take things to a new level, broaden horizons, bring a product that the American people really need. Damn straight. So we're just going to buy a bunch of cheap massage tables and, and drill holes in the middle. Yep. <laughs> by hand so we can say we can buy the the made in china ones and then we can officially yeah. say it was made in america made in, final product made in america <laughs> we did it the second thing that i need to talk about and it's not unrelated to milking tables i'm i guess um mm -hmm. now by the time you all hear this it will have been old news because this comes out on wednesday we record during the weekend but can we all get a hell yeah for um for only fans basically oh, shooting yeah. themselves in the head <laughs> dude their their platforms dead dude like i ugh, it's it's the same shit that happened to tumblr i was a, and you remember i was a big fucking tumblr user i used to make fun was, of you about it because yeah, it's all dumb time. yeah and i was one of those many who jumped shit because the minute they banned porn the website became trash and uh, what is it? They, in the first like two or three months, they lost 33 percent of their whole platform. And was it they originally sold it to Yahoo for like like a billion or something. And then after the porn like cut down, it just like plummeted in value so much that they had to sell it for like one point four mil. Like, dude, there it's over. OnlyFans is done, man. It's done. So and here's the ironic part. Here's the funny part. They did it to appease. Uh, basically people who would be, um, wow, I had a brain fart. Like shareholders? Yeah, investors, investors to appease investors. So yeah. they're like, hey, we're growing. Let's get some more investors. But the investors are like, mm, I don't like this whole porn thing going on there. <laughs> and everybody in the world except for OnlyFans was like, but that's what we, that's what they do. That's the whole point of the website. Like you could do other stuff, but nobody's on there to like support an artist. They're all on there to support E thoughts, yeah, like that's the whole point of it. Like that's the reason why. Like nobody fucking like. Do you remember when like celebrities would open OnlyFans and it was only like just like suggestive lingerie and there was a fucking people were having like aneurysms left and right. There was a, <laughs> almost an angry mob. Like that's like it was considered an insult to have an OnlyFans and not have like sexually explicit content. And now that they're just like, we're just banning it entirely. But no, like, oh, like you could still like, you know, show your pussy. You just can't rub it. Like, it, like, no, like it's, it's not going to work. And people are so <laughs> outraged. It's just, there's going to be enough. And something else is going to fill its shoes. You know, you cut off the head of the Hydra, two more is going to fill its place. You know, that's just kind of how it goes. There's, it's a big industry, but now it's like, 
<laughs> now it's like if you want to be an e thought, now you just got to do porn again, just like the good old days. <laughs> yeah. Now it's now it's back to Pornhub, baby, because that's <laughs> full circle. And it's actually kind of fucked up because like big porn is a really fucked up industry. Like only fans like put power to the back into the players. You know, they could like, regardless of what your opinion is on sex work, it's fucking great that they don't have to go through like a contract shitty sleaze bag that are just like, you know, running this game behind closed doors or like, pimp. No, yeah, they could be their own pimp. Fuck yeah. And that's great. And only fans just slam the fucking door on it. And I think it's a terrible decision on every single front, though. The memes have been fucking hilarious. They've been spicy, it. dude. They've been real good. The most popular one, I think, is that one where it's like all the girls who dropped out of college <laughs> realizing that only fans can't cover their yeah. It's just that guy just like, ah! just like screaming. Dude, I saw I think I saw one where it was that my one of my favorite from one of my favorite movies, Blade Runner 2049, that one scene where Ryan Gosling loses his shit. <laughs> so it's that gif, but it's um the caption above said um, only fan subscribers when they realize they have to look up free porn again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's it's ah, welcome back to it brother yeah and look i've been told that on pornhub there are a lot of um like like uh, amateur accounts like accounts where you're not in you're not controlled at all you can yeah you, i could go on there myself like right now make a couple videos and get verified and then make money that way off ads off, off pornhub so there's still a way to do it without um only fans and without right. uh big porn taking all your innocence and your money yeah, so ladies totally. he, migrate just migrate that way yep. we salute you for your service and um yeah, and our fellow man, I'm sure, thank you for your service. <laughs> People talk shit about sex, Rick, but dude, like, come on. Like, you mean to tell me if, like, porn and just any sort of uh, fucking girl shaking her ass online just, like, stopped existing like people would they would make a better world like are you kidding me <laughs> yeah because like yeah right do you know how do you know how pent up a lot of the men on this planet would be and you don't want that and then it just turns into planet of the apes nobody wants that. oh yeah well and also too they say half the the people who are the most avid consumers are the ones who um are the biggest uh opponents the ones who are the probably the one who fucking cut off uh only fans like right before he made the call he went and downloaded like as many fucking videos yeah. as he could and <laughs> yeah. then axed it Paid one more one more month to Bell. Uh, what's her name? Uh, um, Bell Delphine. Bell Delphine. One more month, and then he's like, "All right, that's enough. I've had it. All my money is going to these whores. Yeah. I have the power to shut this down. I can be a hero." As he's just like still crusty from the jizz from earlier yeah. today. Yep, they're always they're always hypocrites, man. That's the way it goes. Yep, exactly. This is a good intro. Uh, I, I think we we covered some very important topics before we jump back into the ocean. Under the sea, yeah. <laughs> which is fair because we're doing some deep diving, you know, and a lot of important subjects today. But uh, at risk of having hitting a 15 minute intro, let's jump through some horoscope hoops and uh, kind of get the vibe of this episode, which I think is already pretty good. Um, but we got to see what the stars have to say. Sounds like a plan, Stan. You want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. All right. You are at an emotional climax now, Cancer. Yeah, you could say that. Mm. One could say <laughs> things are coming to a critical point. Wow. <laughs> Little issues in your relationships that you've ignored are coming back to haunt you. Someone could be trying to cross you at this time, or maybe it just feels that way. Don't get overly paranoid. The whole world isn't out to get you. Oh, sounds like also too, like we have, we have <laughs> climax coming little. Is that, is there some sort of correlation here? Yeah, so I just finished when we were talking about OnlyFans, and I have a little penis. I think that's ah. what that means. <laughs> wow, just just on blast, even by the stars, huh? Yeah, and they they weren't really hiding it. They were just kind of straightforward about that. So <laughs> trying to be all clever and use wordplay and all that too. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, my sex is a two out of five. Okay. Nah. That's because I just finished, though, so I needed about 12 hours to recharge that that jism. <laughs> right. I mean, like, the, the, the urge is there, but I, I'll be shooting blanks. Uh, I'm with you, man. I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, slow recharger as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, hustle is a four out of five. Vibe is a three out of five. Success is a two out of five. 
Okay, pretty average. Pretty standard Sunday action right there. Yeah, sounds keep holy the the Sabbath, right? Amazing grace. <laughs> There's a lot of singing going on in this episode. Yeah, very musical. I also got to point out with the, the talk of church and shit, you are wearing an... I, the the Aidas shirt was a bit. Nick is actually wearing an Austin 316 shirt, which is a, a wonderful reference to, uh, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. That bit of him where he took over the uh, the the company, the WWE, was uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. It made him have a drinking contest in the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> See who keeps their job. <laughs> Briefcase full of beer. Like, what a guy. Oh, man. So good. Oh, geez. All right. Let's see. On my end, um, there's power behind your heart, Scorpio, and you might come across more forcefully than usual in the love and romance department. Ooh. This is a good day to make. All a right, Weinstein. Move toward- yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. See, I don't work in the entertainment industry anymore. I can't. You can't <laughs> put that finger at me. <laughs> your internal fire burns more brightly than ever. Share this warmth. Spreading your love will ensure that people are happy to keep you warm on days when your fire sputters out. <laughs> I, okay. I think this is another uh, dig at my sex life. I, th- I yeah, it's there. I think they're talking. They were on the surface talking about emotions. I think they're yeah. just talking about your your yeah your libido. Yeah, they're saying um I'm no longer shooting rope. It's more like uh you know a couple little little droplets now. So yeah. they're just like <laughs> basically they're saying just hang in there. It'll pass, and you'll be back to you know uh just you know firing off lasers like usual. Yeah, buddy, shooting right. ropes. Yep, and then aptly um rated sex is a two out of five. Hustle's a four out of five. Vibe is a three out of five. And success is a three out of five. So, so yeah, not too bad. Damn, we were almost the same. Almost the same. And and I do got to point out that cancer is in the love match today. So <laughs> lucky you. We don't have that fucking milking table. Otherwise, it'd be a busy <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, dude, we could take turns on it. Dude, it'd exactly. be awesome. <laughs> and since it's in the love category, because instead of like our usual, just like hard, cold, uh, emotionless lust, yeah. um, we'll light a candle. And that'll that'll cover it. Yeah, it'll make it romantic. That's all you need. And then just tug jobs after. Exactly. Like fucking like punching it and shit. (laughs) A little CBT, a little like cock and ball torture, you know, (laughs) only the finest. Well, well, that'll be our thing is uh, we'll just start. We'll release a line of uh, um, BDSM like tools and toys and stuff like that. And I'll have our podcast name. It'll, It'll fit with the color scheme. Yeah, see, and people will because people are so openly openly sexual these days. They'll buy it. Now, I hope. I hope that some of the people listening to this right now are like in public and or at work or <laughs> yeah. with their windows down in the car. I really hope that they've been listening this whole time because it's yeah, show, showing this podcast to their parents for the first time. Like, see, no, they're appropriate. I can listen to them. Right. And then we're just like cock and balls. Like, yeah, milk ER, table, SpongeBob. Like. I require immediate <laughs> cock and ball torture. <laughs> Right, we're, we're happy to have you here. And if you're, you've gotten your fucking Apple account closed or <laughs> computer taken away, uh, we await your return. That's right. <laughs> well, okay. Horoscopes are done. Uh, um, welcome back. Let's get into the topic. And the topic for today's episode is going to be a fun one. Okay. It's one that I think Tasker and I have been wanting to talk about for quite some time now. Right. And it's one that I'm sure many of you out there are we're looking forward to or have heard of before and wanted us to talk about. So I'm glad we're doing it. Um, now, of course, you guys saw the title. We are talking about the great lost nation of Atlantis. Yep. And it, I'm sure a lot of you guys clicking on this probably watched the, the animated movie from a while ago. If I remember correctly, is that the one that's kind of got like a steampunk vibe about it? Maybe maybe not I steampunk, hear- like a... Uh, What's the exact I genre? Where, I see where you're coming from. It is kind of like sci-fi-ish. Like sci-fi-ish, it's very, yeah. And not Steam, but yeah. I think I'm thinking of the Wild Wild West. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little different. Um, it was a good movie. Like, yeah, I think that was the first time I ever like was like, uh, I think this is what set me down the path of like jerking off to animated uh, women. Oh, good. Which one in there was it? Was was it one the princess? Oh, okay. Oh, no, yeah. You, you never had like a crush on like an animated girl when you were a kid. Well, yeah. Well, I started jerking off to animated women w- with Snow White because uh, I would yes. imagine her getting gang banged by seven of the midgets. <laughs> wow, dude. That's. <laughs> I mean. They're there, so I guess I could see how those pieces got put together. <laughs> That's just hey, when you're six years old, your imagination is always it's on top of the world. <laughs> I'm 
what you used it for such creative endeavors. Yeah. And see, and the fun part is each of them has a different personality. So I could imagine that too. Like Dopey was real bad at it, you know? So, <laughs> okay. So then which, which of the seven dwarves get, lays the best dick? Grumpy. Yeah. That's right, because he hate fucks them. So he hate fuck, man, and with hate fuck, you, you just last forever, and you just want to you just keep plowing, man. Go hard. You hit everything because you want to hit everything because you're fucking mad. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, that's that's that's, that's what my, that was my childhood. That's insightful. <laughs> yes, makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of things are coming together here, but <laughs> but yes, uh, I, I forget the name in the main of the main like princess character, but that, that was one of the first like girl things I saw on on like screen. I was like, oh hey, that's uh, that's pretty good. There you go, man. See, uh, Atlantis has done a lot for all of us. Tasker started <laughs> jerking off to cartoons because of it, and I started getting into mysterious islands and shit like Lost yeah. Nations perfect it's it's an inspiration so we have to give it the respect it deserves and do an episode on it that's right and um now like i said most of us already know about atlantis maybe even you know um, and it is an island so forgive the pun but or the plan words but most of us know like that that the tip of the the surface of it right but right. um in today's episode we're aiming to bring you information which you might not have heard about when it when it comes to the origins of Atlantis as a myth or as a mystery, okay? Right, because everyone knows, oh, Atlantis, it's like in the ocean, and it's just supposedly in the Atlantic Ocean, I'm assuming. Yes. So, yeah, and I don't know, like, you know me, I don't read the outline, so this all could be new shit to me. Like I said, the extent of what I know is what I saw from the movie, so this will be just like, you know, we're here to undo that Hollywood brainwashing, and, like, let's we can learn something actually uh, factual. That's right. And uh, I will be including aliens and the theories surrounding aliens and Atlantis as well. And Tasker, I know how excited you are about this. Thrilled. So without further delay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> grab your metal detectors, put on your scuba equipment, but most importantly, make sure your pineal gland is thoroughly decalcified because we're diving right in. Okay. So there are a lot of legends and ideas that come to mind when Atlantis is brought up, okay? For instance, Tasker, when I say the word Atlantis, well, okay, I wrote this before you told me about the whole jerking off thing, so I know what comes to your <laughs> mind when I ask you about that. <laughs> well, also, fucking, uh, uh, you know, Milo and his adventure and, like, yeah, and the, the guy who blows things up, and there's, like, the Russian lady and the guy who looks like a rat. So just the cartoon comes to your mind, right? When I yes. when I say the word Atlantis, okay, yes. See, and that's 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 fine, and that's an example right there of many different things come up because Atlantis, the myth of it, has been around for a very long time. So it makes sense that you know me, the media will get a hold of it, like they did with this cartoon movie. Um, people sometimes think about like mermaid societies for some reason, um, which I can tell you, as cool as it would be, not the case. Okay, right, but. Um, what I think we should do to really clarify the origins of what we know to be Atlantis, where did we first hear about it? Let's get into that. Okay. Yeah, because this has been around since, like, ancient times, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So, like Tasker said, ancient times. Let's travel back in time to ancient Greece, um, a, a place full of gyros, right? Uh, Hairy-armed yeah. men. Uh, like who who look like the human version of Watto from Star Wars, and boys <laughs> being touched inappropriately by adults. Okay, you know ancient Greece shit. Yeah, uh, and democracy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. At least the beginnings of democracy. Right. So anyway, a man is born and went on to be a great thinker and philosopher. I'm sure many of you know who I'm talking about. We're talking about Plato. Okay. Yep. Plato is the crux of the legend of. Atlantis. So we will be hearing his name a lot this episode. Weird. Yes. Now, Plato was many things and is considered to be one of the most influential people in history uh, when it comes to recorded history, like history he recorded, and of course, his philosophy, which is probably the biggest thing he's ever done. Wasn't Plato like his like wrestling name? Like we never did figure out his actual name, but like he was just went by Plato. 
because <laughs> that was so hold on so you're telling me that plato was his uh like his his uh squared Station. circle name so like you know the rock <laughs> and uh stone cold and all these you know the undertaker and then we have plato as his wrestling name i think so oh wait hold on let me see um plato was an athlete particularly skilled as a wrestler his given name was Aristocles, Aristocles, Aristocles. Oh, Aristocles. After his grandfather. But the coach with whom he trained is said to have called him Plato from the Greek for broad, no, noting his broad shouldered frame. So, yeah, that's a, yeah. So that's like if one of the most influential men in history was the fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin, basically. Fuck yeah. The, the ancient equivalent of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> who says he isn't? Yeah, that's very true. I, I think he has a major impact in culture. He even has his own beer. He does. Oh, I got to try that, actually. So now something else that Plato did was take account of things happening at the time in his philosophy through his dialogues, which they were called his dialogues, but they're basically stories he created using real life situations and, and people, um, but w- with his philosophy in it. Mm. So that's that's a way that we I mean, he didn't do all of his philosophizing that way, but that's one of the ways we do have like records. Right. Right. Now, some of what, like I said, some of what we know about ancient times and ancient Greece in specific comes from his firsthand accounts and also from his dialogues. Now, Atlantis is mentioned in two of Plato's dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, Critias, Kriti- uh, bro. I don't know. What do you think? Right. Because uh, I don't know how do you, you pronounce things in, in Greek. Uh, the instinct tells me Critias, but that doesn't seem right with the T. Critias, maybe. Critias. I'm sure somebody will correct us. Correct us somebody, if I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I should I should have put this at the top. We look, w- guys. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We aren't historians. Okay. Nah. This is the most linguists. Yeah. Or yeah, I didn't go to school for that either. So like, um, (laughs) this is the most I've ever read about ancient Greece. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) this is pretty much it. Yeah. So it's, they get the idea, I think. Okay, good. So I'm just going to refer to these two dialogues as Timaeus and Critias. Hmm. Timaeus is a dialogue in which the titular character with the help of supporting characters like Socrates speculate on the physical world and the human beings who inhabit it and their interactions together. That's what the basis of Timaeus is about. Deep. Now, very deep. It's like it's like an episode of Seinfeld, you know? <laughs> Something like that. In this dialogue, not much is said of Atlantis except for the fact that Atlanteans and the Athenians were at war with each other at a certain point in history. That's the only time that it's mentioned in this dialogue. Okay. And this leads us to the second and more important of the two, in my opinion, which mentions Atlantis in depth, Critias. Critias is almost entirely about Atlantis, and this is where we get a bulk of our clues about its location, society, how it came to be, all that kind of shit. So it's just basically a, a Greek myth that Plato came up with. Whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) <laughs> let's not start throwing the m word around all of a sudden <laughs> that's what it sounds like so far but i don't know you're i know you're still let's let me hear all your information first before i make a judgment call okay all right oh trust me we're going to be discussing this at the end of the year i, I, I got to hear what you have to say i already know what you're going to say but i got to yeah, hear yeah. it and the people need to hear it and i need to yell at you about it this is fair this is fair and very much uh on brand so according to this dialogue critias uh, Critias, uh, who gives a fuck at this point? Um, the earth yeah. was divided up into different sections and given by allotment to various gods and goddesses to like look over and to do with what they will. Okay. All right. And so Plato first describes Athens. At the time, Athens was pretty baller place as far as ancient city states go. Uh, he describes it as being virtuous. They lived in moderation, so they weren't getting fucking wasted all the time like those goddamn Romans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) I did hear Romans were wine drunk literally 24-7. That was every citizen. (laughs) The kids, the grandmothers, all of them, man. The fucking heathens. (laughs) Sounds like fun. 
So after the Athenians lived in moderation, you know, they were like intaking alcohol, but they weren't going crazy. Kind of like what Tasker right. and I do now. And yeah. um, they had experienced artisans, which was a really big profession back then. And they had very hard workers in their other professions. And they were actually very rich in natural resources, most notably fresh spring water, which was hard to come by in those times, as you can imagine. That's what Plato said. Yeah. Fucking healthy. Healthy as shit. These dudes were killing it. Mm hmm. Then he goes on to talk about Atlantis. Atlantis came about when this island was allotted to Poseidon, okay? The god of the ocean himself. One of my favorite ancient gods of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Vaping kills. Oh, man, that was brutal. Can you imagine if that was just it? And he just killed him. <laughs> I will say I, I exaggerated the cough a bit, but that was very uncomfortable. <laughs> it sounded like it. <laughs> So just like we've seen a lot in the past with the ancient gods, Poseidon fell in love with a mortal named Cleto. Uh, and I assume this is a female because yeah. they ended up fucking like rabbits. Oh, yeah. And she bore children. So that's a, that's a, usually a pretty female characteristic. Uh, Tasker, that's pretty sexist. Oh my fucking God, don't even start with me. <laughs> what are you, ableist or non-ableist? I don't know. How is that able? You're a not Being dude. A are you a cis ableist uh, sexist? cisgender male i think uh, I just, this, i'm like not trying to think of like what i could be blamed for by making that comment and it's already too deep oh yeah well i'm a semi-bisexual did you know that yeah just in case anybody out there is wondering is i'm bisexual but i'm only uh, attracted to one sex I can't wait for the Twitter. Eventually, that that one Twitter account that's just gonna piece our like, show <laughs> yeah. apart like bit by bit. And this is gonna be the uh, problematic segment number eight. And on top of that, too, speaking of Twitter, did you hear? Uh, fucking Jeopardy tried to like pawn that one of their executive producers as the new host of it, and um, he ended up having to step down because of. And this is, I thought this was extremely relevant. Problematic um, statements on a comedy podcast. Oh God damn! So you're telling me, you're telling Don't me go in the entertainment industry, <laughs> man. That's why I jump ship, and that's why I'm having a lot more fun on the show because I don't have to worry about it ending my career. That's fair. As long as we keep it on the DL and nobody knows who we are for the most part, then whatever. Yep, we'll see. But if we get really big, then I might have to start cleaning up my act because. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, um, correction. If we sign on to a major label that pays us a fuck ton of money, then okay, maybe we might have to clean up a little bit. But till then, you know, we're we're gonna kind of we keep stretching it. All right, so I can say never mind. No, okay. <laughs> if there was a brief cut that sounded awkward, that's because Nick said something he shouldn't. Have. <laughs> Yikes! All right, so. Did I tell you my mom listened to this podcast? I listened to our show after a long, after like our first or second episode. It's been that long. And you know how much worse we've gotten. Um, oh, no. she, she listened to, I think it was Bill and Hillary Clinton part one. And I think she said somewhere in there, I said that being gay was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, that was a bit of our rebellious phase, huh? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you show me the gene and I'll change my mind. But <laughs> oh my god, that's really funny. Yeah, because that's right. Your mom was. Uh, if you listen to our earlier episodes, I think we do poke out the fact that the only one who listened was like your mom, and like my mom didn't even bother. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah that was pretty much it, man. My mom and my aunt. Oh my that. yeah and we had like maybe like one or two like friends from high school that like listened to it yeah yeah now look oh at us God. just being yep. just as just as in, uh, offensive but now to a, a broader audience yeah i feel like we've refined it a little bit i, I think our the offensiveness was a little rough for a bit but uh i think we we've, we've polished it a little bit more i can make it rough if you guys want i could start doing down syndrome voices <laughs> like i could do that in the rest of the outline and that if you want Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's not do that, though. Let's okay. not. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. So before we got off on that tangent, remember, Poseidon fucked Cleto. Okay. A, a mortal woman that he fell in love with. Uh, and they, they did it a lot. So she gave him many children. Um, the right. firstborn was given the name Atlas. Most likely, you know, based off Atlas, the guy yeah, who held up the world. Deal. Cool. 
and he inherited the new I okay actually I take that back uh, he inherited the new island kingdom which was to be named Atlantis yep this all sounds so realistic okay hold hold your hold your goddamn horses man <laughs> we're all look let's get through the let's get through the history of it and then at the end of the episode I'll tell you what's really going on here all right all right Atlas would pass down rulership to his firstborn and then that firstborn would pass it down to theirs and so on and so forth, right? Like it's like a begot, oh, that Bible thing that Joseph begat whatever and you know what I mean? For like 12 pages. <laughs> I would love to see you as a youth pastor <laughs> <laughs> using that. As- <laughs> look, I'll just tell him, look, guys, you can skip the first like 30 pages of the New Testament. It's, it started with this guy and now we have Jesus. All right, now let's, let's get a move on. Yeah. Let's get to the good part, man. And then let's go get drinks afterwards. <laughs> still, still big wine, wine guy. All right, we'll get some wine after yeah. this. The blood of him. Yeah, fuck yeah. Plato, or rather, I should say, in this dialogue, uh, Critias, in the dialogue, went on to describe the different facets of life on Atlantis. There was a temple built on the island dedicated to Poseidon and Cleto, the ones who had essentially founded their people. The Atlanteans were also said to be in possession of a rare mythical metal known as Oracalcum. Oracalcum. So this was just the first Wakanda. Wakanda forever. Yes. Yes. Basically. (laughs) Well, now here's the thing. I did put a little bit in here about Oracalcum because I had to look it up. I thought, I, I, I swear to God, at first glance, I thought it was Orsinium from like Skyrim. And I thought it, I was oh. like, like orc ingots and shit. No, it's not. It's not a, it's not orc shit. All right. Oracalcum is a metal mentioned in many ancient writings, but its origins are said to be on the island of Atlantis where it was mined and its value was second only to that of gold. So okay. this metal, this mystery metal, appeared in different writings, but it's usually always tied back to Atlantis. Not bad for a stone with cum in its name. Yeah, uh, I thought that was a weird. I thought that was a weird choice too. <laughs> yeah, that or yeah, or or a calcum. I think yeah, C, straight C U M at the. I know there's more metals like that, but hey, it's valuable like that. Not bad. Not bad for cum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Remember what I said about refining our <laughs> Yeah, but see, that wasn't offensive. That was just gross. That's that's just like toilet humor. Like yeah, it, you yeah, know, yeah. we don't have to refine our toilet humor. You can't refine it. I mean, you could you make it really. you could make it clever, but I don't have yeah. time for that. You know what I mean? That's, well, that's the beauty of toilet humor, is it's unrefined nature and stuff. And plus, you know, boys will be boys, am I right? That's right. That's right, except for when I transition. <laughs> Yeah, that does change things, but it's in the name, actually, to, uh, in terms of uh, animal. Anyways, let's not talk about this. Okay, all right, all right. So, also, on top of Oracalcum, they also were said to have gold, tin, and brass naturally on their island as well that they could mine. Mm. And for those of you not in the know, one of the, and this is off the top of my head from my my old history days, I took like 12 history classes at junior college, if I remember correctly, one of the things that brought us into the Bronze Age with better weapons and such is bronze, which is tin and iron. Uh, let's Will see. you fact check me on that? Bronze. Bronze is an alloy consisting primarily of copper and uh, with about 12 to 12.5 percent tin. Okay, I knew it was in there somewhere. <laughs> Is yeah. there any iron in there? <laughs> oh no, just uh, copper, huh? Yeah, it's copper and tin. Oh, okay. I got one of them and right. Yeah, you're close. Yeah, it's fifty percent. I'll, I'll I'll give that to you from the top of the dome. That's that's not bad. I couldn't have guessed that. Thank you. Okay, so but my point being is, um, you know, during this ancient time in history, having half of what you would need to create bronze and for weaponry is a pretty good deal if it's all around your island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty handy. So at Atlantis's peak, they were what is described as a, an ancient world superpower. Uh, they had a lot of sway with the people around them because of their many assets. It's said that they had 10,000 chariots on standby and countless elephants and bulls, which you could imagine are quite hard to get your hands on in the Mediterranean. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, pretty uh, out there. But they're very useful for war. They were very useful for warfare. Uh, elephants, you know, in particular, uh, bulls could be used for you know meat, and uh, if you had a, a lady bull, aka a cow, um, you get milk. Mm-hmm. You just udders. You grab them. Fucking triggered, man. <laughs> milk and tables, milk. baby. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Very milky episode. Yes. Um, and they're also said to have more advanced technology, a.k.a. weapons, than those around them. Um, that This might be because of their many metals that they had uh, available to them. I'm not yeah. sure, but, I mean, it, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt, so... Now, it is also said that just like Athens, Atlantis held virtue in high regard. Here is a passage from Critias uh, uh, describing the virtuous character of Atlantis and her people. Quote, for many generations, as long as the divine nature lasted in them, they were obedient to the laws and well affectioned towards the God whose seed they were, a.k.a. Poseidon. For they possess true and in every way great spirits uniting gentleness with wisdom in the various chances of life and in their intercourse with one another, a.k.a. be gentle when you have sex. That's very nice of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, be gentle as long unless they're asking for you to not be gentle, you know, give that get that consent and then get a safe word. Oh, yeah. Yo, man, you fucking women are horny bastards, man. Yeah. Tell tell me about it. <laughs> Nick, are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if your safe word was don't uh, don't stop? That could get really confused. I, I bet you some people have done that on purpose. Huh, interesting. It would either be confusing or it would work better than ever because it's so like off that you're like wait what the fuck that's right this that that means or it's not it i I would be the one who would get myself fucking killed because i would say that i would shout the safe word and it it just wouldn't register and that'd be good (laughs) because i would get just as confused i mean and this is me not like in the middle of something because you know like you're you're not thinking straight when you're going at it i feel like at least for me it would be disastrous but some people out there it might work yeah yeah if they can make it work then hey that's a perfect safe word Mm mm-hmm Damn, you know, for both of our sex stars being two out of five, you know, this is a really charged episode. Dude, I'm rock hard right now. Yeah, man, it's fucking, it's whack. I'm glad I jerked off before this. Otherwise, <laughs> I just wouldn't be able to focus at all. Yeah, I don't because I want to be hungry, you know, like the wolf. <laughs> See, I, I got it because if I don't, if it, if it all that's pent up, I just get distracted. But it's like, you know, I feel so like lightning focused now. That's good. I'm 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 getting us distracted. I apologize. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, I don't know if you guys picked this up, but I'm on like fucking like five hours of sleep. <laughs> so whether it's good or bad, uh, I guess we'll know in post-production. So anyways, back to the show. All right, back to the show, back to the quote. We're still in this quote from Critias. <laughs> right. They despised everything but virtue, caring little for their present state of life and thinking lightly of the possession of gold and other property, which seemed only a burden to them. Neither were they intoxicated by luxury nor did wealth deprive them of their self-control. But they were sober and saw clearly that all these goods are increased by virtue and friendship with one another, whereas to great regard and respect for them, they are lost in friendship with them. Okay, so So friendship is magic. Fuck you. (laughs) Yeah. Hey man, that's I'm just saying, man. That's that's my take of my my summary. There we go. Okay, that's so. If that's your summary, if that's your summary, I'm gonna give a summary as well. So basically, what is happening here is in in their peak. Yes, they were a superpower. Yes, they had a lot of shit. But what that's saying is, when you are virtuous and you're respectful of your neighbors and your friends, you get shit. All right. It's basically that old adage of. Be nice and people will be nice to you, usually. And you can get shit easier that way. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Friendship is magic. Okay. All right, Chris Chan. Say it one more time. (laughs) No, you can't. If you say it three times, you summon his presence. Oh, dude. Could you imagine? (laughs) Oh, man. No, you just got to go into a mirror and then say, my love quest is over. My love quest is over. (laughs) I think the grossest thing I've seen recently... Regarding him and the whole situation, even though it's it's slightly died down right now, is right. somebody referred to Barbara's pussy as Barbussy. 
<sighs> I didn't need to hear that today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gross. Gross. I'm still working my way through those documentaries. I had to take a break. I don't know how you fucking went on a bender through it. I had to like step away. I think it was like four or five days straight of nothing but that in my ear. Work. It was like sh- games, video games, uh, bath time, whatever I was doing, <laughs> fucking all Chris Chan. Oh my god, that's quite a quite a uh, achievement, if you could call it that. But I did get his I did get his stress sigh down pretty good because I've heard it so many times now. You ready? Let's hear it. Uh, uh. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Anyways. So, like I was saying, yes, they had all this stuff, but they didn't let it get to their heads because they got the mm-hmm. stuff through being virtuous. So they were like, right. yeah, we, we're pretty powerful. We have all this crap, but it's all good in the hood. So at the time, Atlantis was a pretty groovy place, right? Um, virtuous people with a lot of assets, a race full of Greek people descended from a god, and they had rare metals, living on this beautiful island, right? What more could you ask for? Yeah, pretty, it's paradise. It's paradise, but that's the problem. With their increasing amount of good fortune and advances, eventually, just as pretty much anybody in power will do, they wanted more. Ah, greedy humans every time. Every time, man. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, homie. Mm -hmm. They became greedy and corrupt in the eyes of the gods. Now, here is another passage from Critias about their downfall. Quote, When the divine portion began to fade away and became diluted too often and too much with the mortal admixture, and the human nature got the upper hand, they then, being unable to bear their fortune, behaved unseemly, and to him who had an eye to see grew visibly debased, for they were losing the fairest of their precious gifts. But to those who had no eye to see this, the true happiness, they appeared glorious and blessed at the very time when they were full of avarice and unrighteous power, unquote. God, the fucking human tragedy of um, you can't you can't have shit in Detroit like you can't like there's just no matter how good things can be in bad stuff's going to happen or conflict is going to happen, even if we're in an ideal situation. It's only going to last a certain amount of time because it's just human nature to fuck up everything that's good. Like, and it's, it's a cycle. Like, that's the thing is human, the human nature and the human experience is a very, it's very cyclical in nature. Like it goes up and then it goes down and it goes up and it goes down and it comes in waves. There's no perfect way to do it because perfection is a balance and handling of both and making the most out of the good and the evil. But who the fuck can do that? Like, we can't expect that out of the entire population. For most people, it's been some people, it's been net their whole lives. Other people, it's been just a hot soup of vivid fucking nightmares. Tasker, you need to talk. Do you need to talk, buddy? You doing okay? <laughs> Career transitioning is hard, guys. <laughs> I got to say, like I said, I'm not in the entertainment industry anymore, but um, it's different. It's different. Get a little philosophical because the fucking life is hard. Plato would be proud, man. <laughs> very much in the spirit of this episode so <laughs> feels good feels good so with the atlanteans corruption according to the gods zeus in particular was pretty pissed about the whole thing and it said that earthquakes and fire were sent to the island from the gods not only to wipe out the people living there but the earthquakes also caused the island itself to fall beneath the ocean Ah, uh, okay. So that's like a classic tale of, uh, it's just like, it's another Garden of Eden kind of story. Sure. But there's one has more validity than the other, right? <laughs> that's a debate that we can have later for sure. L- look, pal, you show, you take one of your ribs out right now. You make a human from it and then I'll change my mind. <laughs> I'll work on it. I think somebody else probably is and they'll be very interested in my rib. Awesome. Dude, I eat your ribs hands down. Like if you let me. Like, it, let's say you broke a rib real bad, and they're like, look, man, yeah. it's like your lower rib. You don't even really need this shit. We're going right. to take it out. If if possible, if that ever happens to you, God God forbid, right? please give me the rights to that rib. Well, and, that impl- well, and this is actually a question for anybody in the medical field. If you did have to have a rib, like, removed, is there going to be, like, meat on it still? Or is it just going to be the bone by itself? Because I don't. I guess there's, like, marrow. I guess you could eat that. 
I try the marrow, but I I preferred if there was some meat on it, like a little bit even. Right. Well, and for anyone who's like about to like exit out of the <laughs> podcast, um, <laughs> we we did have a we the, we had the foot taco discussion forever ago, where somebody they had to get their foot severed, and if there was a way to legally and ethically try human meat, would you do it? And Nick's answer is yes, because obviously the the rib would have been had to have been broken previously, and they're like, we just gotta get rid of it. Then yeah, sure. Uh, will it be weird to know that you know what my flesh tastes like? Yes, that's gonna be extremely weird. But but that's not weird. It just think of it as us getting closer. Like now, a part of you is inside of me. You know, <laughs> I guess. So technically, like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> you'll have to go up to like my, my girlfriend and just be like, yeah, like technically he's inside me, like yeah, uh, yeah. at all times. How's it feel to have competition? Huh? Oh, good lord, she'll love that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, if that happens, um, I'm yeah, hungry. That, that could be a good. Uh, yeah, oh my god, yeah, that could be a good on camera episode, dude. Dude, I that would actually, I think we could get in the news for that. Break a rib, just one of your no. lower ribs. I'll fly out. We'll make it happen for our hundredth episode. No, that's not going to happen because I also don't want to break a rib. It's not that bad. You only need like nine pounds of pressure to break a rib, dude. I I don't want to suck my own dick that bad. And that's not even proven to even work. If you lose your bottom ribs, if you can do that, that's true. Some of us could just do it by ourselves. (laughs) That's a real talent right there. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Anyway, that, my dear friends, is a brief history of Atlantis and where we first heard of its existence. Plato. Okay. Unlikely source. Now, I think the next logical question when talking about Atlantis after hearing about that is to ask where in the ocean is Atlantis supposed to be located now? Where can we find it at? The Uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Right. The short answer is we don't know because we probably would have found it by now. True. Also, yeah, most of the ocean uh, still has gone uh, undiscovered, right? Exactly. And that's going to be a point that we're going to talk about here. So according to Plato's writings, it is believed that where uh, when the island sank, it was in the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. That's the general consensus. Okay. Sure. However, over the years, many people have speculated on the location of Atlantis and a lot of the areas that they have come up with aren't anywhere in the Atlantic, surprisingly. Oh, so it's just the name. I think the name was derived from Atlas, the firstborn of Poseidon Uh, and Cleto. Yeah, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, Uh, that's okay, good misdirect. But, yes, it's supposed to be in the Atlantic Ocean, so you're not wrong. Okay. Now, in my opinion, the fact that people are coming up with locations outside of the Atlantic is to be expected when something like this missing island is occurring because everyone and their sister is like, hey, it's over by us. No, it's by us because we're special. You know, it's like that kind of shit. Right. Okay. So it's like they're, everyone's just trying to claim it for less their own national treasure. Right. Now, these locations are either places, these ones I'm about to list right now, are either places that are either mistaken for Atlantis or near where the actual Atlantis sank. Dude, you'd be sick if uh, Atlantis was right in the middle or like it was the cause of the Bermuda Triangle. That would that is probably a theory out there. And I think that you're onto something. Look into it. That'd be that'd be cool. And that would make a lot of sense why a bunch of weird shit's going on, because if they have this like mineral that's like unheard of and like amazing that maybe it's it causes like disturbances or some shit like that. Or I don't know, something like that. Now, interesting that you brought that up, because I'm pretty sure In our Bermuda Triangle episode, we did mention Atlantis. I don't remember at what capacity because I can't I can't even remember what we talked about last week. But yeah, I feel bad if we ever have like people come up and be like, oh, remember when you did this blank at the other episode? Like, bro, I was on like two hours of sleep when we recorded that. (laughs) I'm sorry. I don't know the reference to my own show. (laughs) Hey, but it's just like, hey, it's new to me. You know, it's like fresh. Exactly. So it's like we can like re rediscover our, our ourselves as we go along. Exactly. So we can break down these this list of locations into two categories. The first being in or around the Mediterranean slash Atlantic Ocean somewhere in there, and the second being outside and or nowhere near the Mediterranean. Okay. 
And th- by the way, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a, l- a a list of places that have been said to be the home of Atlantis. There are a lot more theories out there with a l- basically if it exists on Earth, there is a location that's been claimed somewhere. It could be a, a fucking Sweden. It could be a you know, I mean, it's just like anywhere, dude, anywhere. Got it. Got it. But these are the more widely accepted We'll say plausible locations. Yeah. These are the ones that people look at the most. Okay. First up is the list in and around the Mediterranean. We have Sardinia, Malta, Crete, Cyprus, and Santorini. Oh, I don't know what any of those places are. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I neglected to look up a map for this episode. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like rapidly trying to look up at a map. But I mean, the Mediterranean, it's, you know, it's by the Mediterranean Sea. So there is a body of water in which for it to fall down. And nobody said that Atlantis had to be fucking huge or like the size of a continent. Right. It's just a big island. That's it. it could, and islands vary in size, boys, you know? Yep. And that's because that's the thing is I feel like when you think of Atlantis, for some reason, it's like, at least for me, it's like I automatically went to like it's a continent like like Australia or something like that. But yeah, no, it, it is. It's just a city. Yeah, exactly. It's just a city state, just like Athens, just like uh, Sparta, just like uh, fucking uh, Rome. I don't know, dude. I'm not a historian. I don't know. All I, literally, all I know about ancient Greece is what I looked at for this episode, which prob- which I could be mixing up shit and and movies like 300. OK, that's it, which is yeah. uh, fictional. But it's something you have a base, at least it's better than zero. Yeah. So in my eyes, well, anyway, let's move on. All right. (laughs) Right on. (laughs) Okay. So, and now we come to the category, the other list of locations, which are said to be outside of the Mediterranean, uh, places like Turkey, chicken. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah. That was a a poultry joke. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sure you were really excited about that when you wrote it last night too, but yeah, that was embarrassing. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, they can't all be winners. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you guys are lucky I didn't just go down a whole list of different foul and, and, and shit because yeah. I would have done it. And then just cut the episode off at the end. No <laughs> outro, no nothing. Uh, the Black Sea. Indonesia. Okay. Cool. Somewhere in the Caribbean Sea. And he like pretty much over there, which by the way, kind of adds up with that Bermuda Triangle theory. I'm going to say that's, uh, that's the one I'm behind. Me too. Uh, Morocco which is in Africa, by the way, for those of you who are racist and think Africa is a continent. Okay. Wait, it is a, uh, a country. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's not my fault. <laughs> you, almost, you almost did it. You almost had it. You're, I, you, you're right there. God, I am just, I am just, I am all thumbs today. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So Morocco, Morocco. And uh, of course, Somewhere in Antarctica, okay? Because Antarctica is apparently the end-all, be-all location for every single paranormal and extraterrestrial thing that happens. <laughs> yeah, if we can't find anywhere else, well, hey, it's probably frozen somewhere in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, yeah, that place is fucking uninhabitable, so it makes sense. Unexplored, uninhabitable, shit could be frozen down there. You don't know, man. It's the thing. Remember, the thing taught us what yep. could be there. True. Although with all those ice caps melting and stuff, soon we will know what's under there. And I mean, um, did it, did you ever see uh, the Tomorrow War? Is that the new one with Chris Pratt? Yeah, I did not see it yet. No, how was it? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't. Should I spoil it? Are you gonna watch it? I'm gonna watch it, but I don't care about spoilers. I, I'm the right, I'm we'll the see. dude who looks up uh, movie plots on Wikipedia before I watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, spoiler warning to Tomorrow War. If you if you don't want to be spoiled, hit that skip like. 10 second button like three times but um yeah it's discovered like the whole like thing that caused like the almost the basically the end of the world was uh an alien fright ship holding like these like bioweapon aliens that crashed in antarctica and froze and when the polar ice caps melted they woke up and just like decimated the planet yeah i mean hey sounds dope i love aliens shoot 'em up movies i love chris pratt he's a goddamn it was hunk. good Honestly, dude, it was really good. I, I thought it was going to be sucky, but um, yeah, me and my girlfriend, we watched it on an airplane on our trip, and it was, yeah, it's a fucking solid movie. It was good. I will watch it then. It sounds really fun. It, it does sound like a heavy political statement, but 
I'll still watch it for the aliens. They make it work, though. It it doesn't feel like a fucking like Al Gore yeah. like, documentary. <laughs> like they really. <laughs> They really like they really make it work and it like it makes a, the whole like thing. The environmentalist like it, it really just makes sense for the story. Um, I will check out the movie. That sounds dope. Um, cool. Now, the question here is, why is there so much confusion and contention when it comes to determining the location of Atlantis? Well, there are a few reasons for this. OK, the first being that the ocean, like Tasker mentioned earlier and like we've mentioned before on this podcast, it's just so it's simply so difficult to thoroughly search because of its massive nature, like your mom. You know what I mean? Shit, it's two strikes, man. Yeah. Okay. That one didn't land. I- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was a good attempt. <laughs> and uh, as we have talked about numerous times before on this podcast, the ocean is a cruel, mysterious, sensual mistress and her ways are mysterious yeah and uh if um i know none of you know that we've talked about this before because nobody listened to the kraken episode but the sea is very dangerous and has got all kinds of you know it's got its own like almost mystical properties yeah but she's so attractive man look tasker i'm gonna say tasker you're a fine girl what a good Mm. wife you would be but my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Oddly charming. Oddly <laughs> charming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the second reason behind the mysterious location is because we just don't have a lot to go off of initially. And if there is no exact location, places all over the world can claim that that's where it is. It's by their ocean. It's not over right. by Greece. It's by us. You know what I mean? Like, so and, and what I mean by we don't have a lot to go off of is that in the Critias dialogue, Plato tells us that Atlantis was located in front of the pillars of Hercules. Oh, now, what's that? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty vague. <laughs> the pillars of Hercules is an area widely speculated to be the Straits of Gibraltar, but it's completely up to interpretation because we don't know for sure. And that's why we get so many locations for Atlantis proposed to us. Uh, Okay, okay. So it could be, it's one of those, you need to find the legendary gates and we don't know where the fuck those are. And there's so many possible legendary gates. Like nobody really knows exactly like what's the right one. Right. Dude, there are so many topographical topographical jesus christ first day it's my first day off uh, hooked on phonics okay give me a break yeah, you're working at, you're going back to school so <laughs> we're good we're good uh, what i meant to say is that there's so many topographical like structures that could look like two things if it looks like two things that kind of look like pillars that could be i guess the pillars of hercules it doesn't have to be in greece because they didn't say it was right so i don't know bro weird well, so we'll just give it the uh, the official. Uh, oh, probably, hopefully, in the Caribbean. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Shit, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, now here's another question we need to ask: How long ago was Atlantis a thing? Like, was Plato alive to witness it? Is that why he wrote about it? No. By it's been great talking to you guys. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> But, okay, so no, he was not alive to witness it, but I think we should put some chronological perspective on this, okay? The two dialogues were discussed uh, that we discussed earlier were written somewhere around 360 BC, okay? So now that we have that as like a base time, in mm. the dialogue Critias, it is said that Atlantis was destroyed and sank 9,600 years prior to that. So, so if we take into old. account, it's old, man. It's old as fuck. So somewhere even past 10,000 BC is what we're looking at here for when Atlantis even fell, l- let alone when it was thriving beforehand. So even older. I'm, I'm going to throw a number out there and guess maybe somewhere around like 11,500 11, 11, to 12,000 BC is when it was thriving. Okay. Okay. So very much like, like wait, prehistoric. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say 1100 BC. Oh, uh, yeah, they would have 
earliest uh, in 12, 12,000 BC. That's uh, around the, uh, the early signs of domesticating goats. So may, maybe, but maybe I don't, you said there were like, bron- but no, you said there were bronze age before the bronze age though. Right. Right. Cause they had that and we'll get into why that may be in a little bit. Okay. All right. So I'm hesitantly agreeing with you. I'll say, okay. I mean, I'm just saying it is outlandish. That's a long time ago. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous, like, but who knows? Yeah, they might be ahead of the game, or maybe there was some alien influence there. Don't ruin the surprise, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had my thing in cap on. So that's that's what we have as far as a timeline for Atlantis, okay? Now, what I figured we should do is go through the different interpretations of Plato and in his history of Atlantis, because believe it or not, Alien and mystery nerds like myself are not the only ones looking at the dialogues throughout time and trying to figure out the truth and what they could get out of it. First, let's begin by taking a look at the interpretations of Atlantis in ancient times. So around the uh, not uh, not strictly around 360 BC, but around the same era as when the dialogues were written. Okay, much like nowadays, people in ancient times had differing viewpoints about the validity of Atlantis. Some believed that it was a real island and an actual advanced, almost prehistoric civilization once lived there. Others believed that it was a metaphorical and mytholo- it was metaphorical and mythological in nature. Mm-hmm. And now here's an example of metaphorical. Uh, for uh, Aristotle, Plato's pupil believed that his teacher created and used Atlantis in the dialogues as a storytelling vessel for his philosophical views about greed corruption and all the like you know yeah which makes sense if you want to be a fucking hater about it you know like if you want to if you want to end the conversation right there be like yep that's pretty much it yeah and we could but we're, we're only an hour in we we need to fill the fill the space yeah and we're not we're not quitters either because i refuse to believe that it was metaphorical <laughs> spitters are quitters yeah they are <laughs> like swallow it anyway <laughs> <laughs> PSA for <laughs> all those who just lost your income from OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely have to charge extra for swallowing now. Oh, yeah. Others truly believe that Atlantis was a real place and that Plato was passing down knowledge in the hopes of keeping this civilization alive through story. So, Curious. yeah, very, I mean, of course, people are going to disagree on it, but I think Aristotle's point is interesting, but, uh, but uh, closed minded. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about the interpretation of different members uh, of different members of the Christian and Jewish faiths in early times. Jewish philosopher Philo wrote about Atlantis in one of his writings entitled "On the Eternity of the World." Here is a passage which mentions it: "Quote and the island of Atlantis." which is greater than Africa and Asia, as Plato says in Timaeus, in one day and night was overwhelmed beneath the sea in consequence of an extraordinary earthquake and inundation and suddenly disappeared, becoming sea, not indeed navig- navigable, but full of gulfs and eddies, unquote. Wow. So basically saying that, you know, he knows about the story and he knows that you can't find it because it became the sea. It sank too low. Yeah. And back then, you know, they didn't really have ways to, you know, prove that or because, yeah. And if it's sunk way back then, it's, you know, that's long gone by now. It's gonzo, man, because corals forming around it. And that may and that may be another reason it's hard to find is because it's it's uh, the coral and the different things that form around man-made objects in the water, especially over thousands of years, might be interfering with like sonar equipment and such. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about. Yeah, like shit. Like the ocean isn't like a stagnant like ecosystem. Like shit's going to grow on it. If it's there or the location, it probably doesn't even like look like a city anymore. It's probably all that stuff's been like, you know, reduced to rubble by this point. Yeah. And water erosion, you know, yeah, all that taken out, you know? So yeah, I mean, it could be, we could have passed over it before and just not known. Yeah. And also back then, you know, it wasn't known for its survivability of the ocean, the architecture and stuff like that. So like, yeah, uh, Atlantis. I mean, this is the fucking sad boy take, but Atlantis might have already just eroded long ago, and there's nothing left of it. Yeah, shit, dude. And hey, at least that's at least if that's the case, it was real at one point. 
that's it. wow. I feel like we actually stumbled upon something. I think that we should we should not go to school tomorrow, and we should just start putting everything towards looking for Atlantis now that we know what to look for. Yeah, well, we could uh, get little beanies and stuff and our big sailor coats and just like just start drinking nothing but rum. Yeah, singing shanties and I'll sing that. Uh, I'll sing brandy by looking glass a few more times saying how the sea is my lady or whatever. Stale bread and beef jerky for the rest of our lives. Uh, dude, it's the life. It's the life. Yep. So we do it. Grow out our beards more. And it'll be uh, it'll be fun. Yeah, having sex uh, on the poop deck. <laughs> yep, that's, I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> uh, it's gross. All right. <laughs> Not the gay thing, the poop deck name. <laughs> gay people are gross. Good, good clarification, especially after looking back at our older episodes. <laughs> See, I'm ma- this is character development. I'm making, you know, before I thought it was a choice. Now I think it's just, a, it's an, appro- it's an a, a, a acceptable choice. <sighs> All right. <laughs> So, on the Christian side of things, speaking of gays being gross, one example is the, is that <laughs> unbelievable. It's like okay. One example is is that of Anglican theologian and bishop named J.B. Lightfoot, aka my my boxing name. J.B. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> In his 1885 work, Apostolic Fathers. He mentions Atlantis in the following passage, quote, Clement may possibly be referring to some known but hardly accessible land lying without the pillars of Hercules. But more probably, he contemplated some unknown land in the far west beyond the ocean, like that fabled Atlantis of Plato, unquote. So uh, I don't know what he's saying. I think he's saying something about, uh, don't know. Couldn't do it. I couldn't do it for you. Let's see, can I be referring to some known? Yeah, there might have been a lost island, but I don't think it's Atlantis. I think there's something like it, but he doesn't think it actually existed as the way Plato described it. Got it. Okay. So at least he's admitting that there's some mysterious lost nation somewhere. Yeah, something's down there. However, so it's hard to tell whether, you know, they're kind of on the fence about it, but early Christian writers and scholars did believe that Atlantis once existed as Plato had described it. There were a couple, there were some of them. Uh, for example, two of them, one named Tertullian and the other named Arnobius, believed in Atlantis. Uh, gotta gotta say, guys, what the fuck was up with the names back then? Um, language was still developing. Well, no, they're they're Greek. Greek is a modern language too. Um, don't know, don't know, guys. Uh, look, my name's my name's Nick. Just four <laughs> letters, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of the easiest like consonant to noun transitions you could possibly get in language yeah except for tertullian and uh arnobius and all these fucking jackasses anyway <laughs> so i do want to point out though is is arnobius the latter of the two did believe that the downfall oh uh, so he believed in atlantis but he believed the downfall was caused by pagans which is pretty racist uh, <laughs> or yeah. whatever <laughs> That's where you draw the line, huh? That's where I get a little personally offended because, look, yeah. not all pagans are bad. In fact, most pagans are not bad at all. They're good people, um, you know. You know, except for like, uh, you know, the Asatru yeah, ones, people, because yeah, they're you know the ones, racist. Yeah, or the ones like strung out on pain meds, or uh, the ones that are on meth. Right, but that could be any like there could be Christians on meth, you know, like <laughs> that's true, you know. Look, just I because they pay, probably, d- what d- you'd probably find more Christians hooked on yeah. pain probably than pagans, <laughs> realistically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, hey, they're like, hey, if it, it, it wasn't in the Ten Commandments and not do meth, so it wasn't invented back then. So hey, you know, it's a it's a loophole. Yep, always thinking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, of course, guys, we have to talk about the Nazis. We got them. They they weaseled in uh, literally everything. And I will talk about that. But yes, they do weasel themselves fucking into everything. So yes, uh, the Nazis. So you know we had to bring them into this because as you all, as we know, a lot of us know, uh, more has come out through time and history. The higher ups in the Nazi party, some of them were definitely into the mystical and esoteric side of the final solution. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the final solution is what I call it when I finish my math homework as well. 
<laughs> that's that's accurate. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so essentially, even before the Nazis in the early 1900s, there was something in Germany known as the German Ariosophic Movement. Okay? Don't know what it was. It was like a political movement. Okay? <laughs> okay. Now, a common popular ideology throughout this movement was that Atlanteans were Hyperboreans. Okay? Now, I will what? explain what those are because I know what those are. Hyperboreans were... An, or, or hyperbeans, I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest with you guys, were an alleged race of superhumans who... Okay, okay all right. No, don't you fucking turn your head at me yet. You look back all at right. the camera and you take this. <laughs> Fine. An alleged race of superhumans who lived in the northern parts of the world, a.k.a. what we would consider now to be like Greenland, Iceland, Sweden, you know, where Vikings come from and shit. Okay. According to the ancient Greeks, at least, uh, the the idea of Hyperboreans were actually is actually a, an ancient Greek thought. So the Nazis took this from the German Ariosophic movement and ran with it because they're like, "Hey, I know what this does." Um, because basically, they twisted it their own way, uh, saying that the um, you know because they weren't you know they they weren't super nice to Jews you know like they didn't like no, them. They, yeah, we're not the kindest to them. Yeah, which is unfair, right? No matter you no matter how many like media co- corporations and banks mm. and uh, major facets of the world they control, it was still unfair, right? All right, what's the point you're trying to make here? So, anyway, so <laughs> the so they they didn't like them. So, they uh they were like, you know what? Hyperboreans, though, they're like the complete opposite of Jews. Because they're like big and strong, blonde, blue eyed, um, kind of giant like almost, you know, what, uh-huh. what we think of when we think of Northern Europeans, the master race, if you will, according uh, well, to them. So they, well, it sounds just like uh, the Nords from uh, Skyrim. Right. Exactly. So that's that was what the Nazis wanted to be, just to choose the Nord class? Pretty much. I mean, that's exactly what they were going for with this whole master race dumb shit, because they're like, okay, blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, genetically strong and big and and resilient, um, and w- who fits this? The Hyperboreans. So, but then, but then I thought the Atlanteans were Hyperboreans. So that must mean that the that Atlantis is the home of the master race, what they see to be the master race. So they were super into Atlantis. Unfortunately, hashtag Nazi logic. Nazi logic, right? Um, and now, in fact, the high, some of the higher ups believed in of the Nazi Party believed in this theory so much that Himmler himself, Heinrich Himmler, made this theory a part of their official Nazi doctrine. Wow! So Atlantis was literally in like an official document yeah. in places in Nazi Germany. Interesting. Yeah, basically, yeah. Atlanteans as Hyperboreans was like actually taught through doctrine. Oh my God. Now, um, leave it to the Nazis to ruin yet another dope thing. Okay. First, it was the swastika, and the, which is a symbol of positive meaning all throughout the world. Um, they took it, they literally flipped it, and then boom, anytime you see a real one, like an actual swastika, the way it's supposed to be faced and in the, in the cultural context it's supposed to be in, you think about gas chambers. Yeah, it definitely has a context of the forced end of a very large number of human lives. Yes. So they took that, they fucked it up. And how about Doc Martin boots, right? Them shits is tight. I have a pair. However, when you wear them, people think you're either a fucking neo-Nazi or a grunge era lesbian. (laughs) See, I didn't even know Doc Martens had that kind of like uh, context on it before. Yeah, man, because, I mean, it's getting better now because a bunch of goths wear them, right? Because, like, goths right. used to wear them back in the 80s, which was still probably no bueno because it was closer to World War II. Yeah. Um, I wear them because, you know, I'm into that goth post-punk action. But they still have that connotation of, hey, the the Nazis used to wear that. And, my God, were they stylish. And we've talked about this before, and it's a goddamn shame because they're a bunch of racist. Uh, monsters, but by God, did they look okay? Yeah. Well, also too, didn't like the punk movement kind of reclaim it because uh, 
like old punk, like in like uh like UK. Like they they had like a bunch of like Nazi shit because for the shock value and stuff. Yeah. But in a way, they sort of like it became more like less about the Nazi shock value thing and more just because they just wore them just to wear them, you know? Yeah, it was shock value. It was ironic. It was, um, you know, what punk was at the time in the late 70s, man. It was groovy and it was against the grain. Now, me personally, I wouldn't have worn any of that shit. That's just me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but I'm not punk. So, you know, there's that. Um, also, I like black metal. Yeah, fight me about it. Now, there's a lot of Nazis in black metal, okay? Um, that's also something that was ruined now ahead of time in the future, but the Nazis technically ruined black metal. I don't know any specific examples, but I believe it. Yes, yes, there are a lot out there. In fact, sometimes it's more often than not, it's harder to find a black metal band that is not Nazi than one that is. So the more you know. Ah, good stuff. Uh, now, now they've ruined Atlanteans. Okay. So, so th of course I was joking earlier when I was talking about the Jews and how they control everything. I know that people control uh, whatever, you know, you make your way, you could be, you could be Jewish. You could be not Jewish. You know, you make your way up in a corporation. You can, you can earn it and you can, oh, you know, anyway, you're right. So that's me saying, sorry, but all I'm saying is the fucking Nazis are the worst because they've ruined now Atlanteans for us. And now, um, after this episode, when I think of Atlantis and Atlanteans, no longer will I think of mermaids or lost uh, mysterious civilizations. I will think of Heinrich Himmler and his doctrines. <laughs> That's not an image you really want in your head when you're thinking about something that you could potentially get off to. Right. I mean, you used to get off to this. Now, when you think of Atlantis, it's not going to be that cartoon thoughty. It's going to be the nazis so there you go yeah that's a fucking shame <laughs> okay now let's fast forward a little bit to recent times and i will just i will i will define that as being like 1950s to now um there has just been more and more haters when it comes to atlantis and its legitimacy now sure the increasing amount of naysayers can be attributed to advances in technology and science and people actually studying Atlantis trying to find it to no avail right and all that but like I said it's just a bunch of hate <laughs> hate 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 <laughs> yeah it's almost like you know when you say there's no magical civilization under the water people just don't want to believe it or something yeah because well because they get people on a bunch of fucking nerdy fake scientists who were implanted by the government to tell us that a race of half god people never existed in order to keep us like <laughs> dumb and following their orders that's basically what's happening right now yeah yeah i don't even think they even need to do that the government's already got us by the balls just by having the republican and democratic party that's true and also uh, a little something called COVID-19 uh, vaccines, you know? Once again, goes back to the party system. Let's get one to point fingers at the other. And people are taking, like, getting poisoned by having um, alternate cures, you know? Like, the one that it's, like, people are taking, it's, like, this medicine that, like, cures, like, worms and parasites in, like, sheep, which is ironic, by the way. And they'd rather do that than the vaccine. It's kind of... Uh, says a lot, I think. Well, I think it does say a lot because we can't trust the government. The fact that people are going to such lengths to avoid something that they know the government probably spiked with, like, you know, Spanish fly or something, you know, trying to get them all toasted. <laughs> Fucking, and then you, 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 are, you can't be surprised when people go to such lengths, man. You can't trust the government. Are you going to trust the government who's lied about so much stuff in the past? It's a mass cheapening brother and that's what i'm gonna call it okay it's something in the chemical that either is like a time bomb or it's something that is basically doing what they've been doing in the past with our tap water and the fast food that we eat and all this shit <laughs> aka calcifying our pineal glands but now they can do it at an accelerated rate who knows what they put in there maybe with that vaccine shot that they put in there it's just a chemical that straight up fucking disintegrates your pineal gland all right. Well, if you're going to stick to that logic when they plug you into the ventilator, um I hope I hope it stands. What hey man, yeah, come come at me. 
You know what I mean? COVID. I'm not. I'm not scared of some Wuhan woo woos. You know what I mean? Let's do this. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Be safe. There's a way around this. Don't be stupid. Okay, so those are. That's basically what's happening. Is there's a bunch of scientists telling us that that there's no such thing as Atlantis. There's no such thing as an ancient civilization that used to be badass and half god or alien or whatever to keep us following orders. And that's what right. most people believe, like Tasker. Because again, falling for it. It's, it's classic. It's classic. Yeah. Anyway, fuck, fuck me for falling for uh, scientific method proof and like all that shit. The scientific uh, you know, method the is fake. It literally <laughs> is made up. You can make up. I could make up anything and say this is this is a way that we're all going to follow something to make sure that it's real. And they're like, oh, okay, what's it called? Hmm. The scientific method. Like, sounds legit. Let's do it. And it's literally just oh, that. Boy, it's just words to meaning. That's all it is, man. <laughs> You know what? Whatever roundabout logic you can think of and convenient excuses and, you know, what? like I said, whatever helps you sleep at night, whatever makes you feel like that ventilator is worth it, whatever makes you whatever makes you happy, man. Look, I know that I know that you may be surprised. I'm going back to school for psychology, but given given everything I've said, but the problem is I'm going back to school to disprove everything that they're teaching, dude. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be like that student from the 80s that shows that that raises questions about everything. Like, yeah, why? Because nobody asks why anymore. Why? Because some old fuck said that it's true. What about Freud? Everybody believed Freud for years. Now all of a sudden he's yeah. a goddamn pervert. So what's going to yeah. happen in the future with the, when all these other ones are perverts? Fucking Commonly ringing bells accepted. and dogs and, and, and raping mice and shit. You'll have to see what uh, your professors say about because I hear like most professors are like, yeah, Freud was full of shit. Like nobody fucking like follows that anymore. Like a lot of that's been disproven. Yeah, he's d- yeah, because <laughs> because Freud wanted to have sex with his mom and he hated his dad. So he wanted to kill him and he made a whole yeah. complex. Well, he didn't make it. He's like, hey, this sounds familiar. I'm just going to call it yeah. the Oedipal complex. And boom, there you go. Some guy's mad because yeah. he has a penis and he's mad because girls don't have penises. He was also ripped on coke, like for the last <laughs> yeah, like thirty years of his life. So there's that too. <laughs> anyway, so don't trust scientists. Okay, if you can't trust Freud, don't trust scientists. <sighs> Whatever. All right. Is that is that it? Um. Yeah, I guess so. Because that was my last point, but I expanded on it by yelling into the mic. I'm good. Good job. <laughs> okay. Now that's what we have in the modern times. That little piece I went over. Basically, what I'm saying in in modern times in our era. A majority of the people believe that Atlantis never existed. A small minority, a small brave minority like myself and others believe it did. Okay. That's where we're at. Okay. Now, finally, I think that we should discuss a theory about Atlantis and those who inhabited the island. Something that we've been waiting for this entire episode. I know Tasker has aliens. So excited. Yeah, can you say that again for the crowd in the back? Aliens! Yep. Okay, I'm going to give my longest eye roll ever. Just give me... <laughs> that was pretty, that was pretty overdramatic. That was pretty... <laughs> I practiced it, yeah. That was some Broadway <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, there are two main theories when it comes to Atlantis and extraterrestrials. And I'm sure that there are many other ones out there. There are probably countless ones out there. But here are the two that I could possibly subscribe to. I have a hard time deciding which one I believe more. Let's start with the first one. This first theory is that Atlanteans were human, but they were destroyed by aliens. Okay. Okay, maybe. Okay, now here's how it goes. Basically... Atlanteans were just like any other ancient civilization in the Mediterranean there, right? Just like any other city state in Greece, let's say. Okay. But one day an extraterrestrial species paid them a visit like they did to so many different civilizations in the past. During these visits, perhaps the aliens taught the Atlanteans about many things that helped them progress further than their neighbors, maybe as some type of, uh, I don't know, like they did with other civilizations, like they would help people learn faster, you know? Yeah, it gave them a little XP boost or something. Yeah, gave them an edge, gave them an XP boost, man, um, which is pretty groovy. And I should say that I don't know which species this is, okay? Okay. Um, I don't know. 
there's speculation out there. I mean, it could be like fucking any species. Uh, I don't think it was mm. the reptilians, to be honest with you. I think it was a benevolent one because they're here basically trying to progress our species. Um, yeah, they're helping out. Yeah. This is why it is said that Atlantis was advanced technologically for the time. Because we have to remember that essentially what's going on is Atlantis at this point when they're th- when they're beginning to thrive or when they're hitting that point where they're going to thrive, a.k.a. when the aliens show up and help them, it's like almost 12,000 BC. So um, the fact that they're advancing heavily for the time is saying a lot. And I think that has to do with the aliens. Yeah. Well, yeah, like we kind of touched on earlier, like the reason they would be so far ahead with this tech is because they had a bit of a helping hand and uh, didn't share it. Yes. Or the helping hand boosted them a little too fast, and that's why it went led to their decline. Boom. Bingo, baby. So like Tasker basically just said, with the help and the advancement of the alien species, they got too big for their britches. Remember. The downfall is the same no matter what. Greed and corruption, okay? Whether they're just like a regular human society, whether they were half-god human people, or if they were a- if they were humans uh, led by aliens, the downfall is all the same. It, it was because of greed and corruption. Yep, the usual. Now, why were they destroyed and why was the island sank? Now, that's where it differs between the the standard myth and then this theory. Well, in the myth... Plato says the gods destroyed, mainly Zeus, destroyed Atlantis. As we know, all over the world, gods have been interpreted as being extraterrestrial species helping and advancing and basically kind of ruling over dumb ancient people, okay? Yeah. So what if these gods were actually the aliens all along and seeing how their their progression in society in their progression in society and as a species was going the opposite direction spiritually that they wanted right they intended us like they are now they're intending us to be higher beings of love and light but we I was going to say that sounds like pleiadians or galactic federation bullshit exactly probably dealing with a species in the galactic federation right now um and because we're going the opposite direction, they're like, fuck it, experiment's over, you know what I mean? And then just destroyed us. Uh, okay. All right. And the All reasoning right. behind the destruction was because they could have just taken their technologies away or done something, but they wanted to make sure everything was clear so that nothing could be traced back to them. Right. Scorched earth. And well, it's like, you know, they what they did rapidly advanced and it led them in a direction they didn't like. So they don't want that leaking. So they destroyed any possible chance of it get, like getting out. And also, too, who's to say maybe they did this without being under Federation authority. And uh, it was just kind of a little play experiment that went wrong. And they're like, fuck, we got to get rid of this. They're like, oh, man, they're going to kill us. Yep. We're going to get kicked out or <laughs> or worse. Who knows? Right. So that's the first theory. And so it, this would explain, in my opinion, the fire and the earthquake, quote unquote, that took out the island. And this earthquake could have been some kind of bomb or advanced weaponry used by this extraterrestrial species to sink the island. And it would make sense that people would mytho- mythologize that. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, realistically, unless you like create a fire and have a bunch of brush, how are you going to make a big fire that destroys an island? An island, yep. you know what I mean? That'd be pretty advanced. Now, let's talk about the next theory. Um, this one I like a little bit more, and I, but I have, like I said, a hard time choosing between the two. So this one is that the Atlanteans were actually put here on Earth, and they were still destroyed by aliens, just like in the last theory. Okay, but the reasoning behind that changes. Basically... The alien race in question created the Atlanteans and plopped them on Earth as some kind of experiment. Now, what I mean by created is that they made hybrids of their race and humans, whether that was through artificial insemination or just straight old romantic, you know, love bumps. Yes. So I don't know which one. I'm hoping it was the second one. Probably. 
And the purpose of this experiment is to see how their hybrids, a.k.a. their bloodline, would fare against other humans. They basically wanted to place their bloodline on Earth to continue and maybe even take over eventually, not like in a reptilian way, because we know that the reptilian bloodline has been around a long time, but for nefarious purposes. Um, right. I, like I said, I don't think that these were reptilians with Atlant- w- that dealt with Atlantis, so they probably were placing their bloodline here to just raise our consciousness. I'm not sure. Yeah, or just scientific curiosity. Hey, like we have a a giant planet-sized terrarium. Like we might as well try this out and see how they do. Precisely. That's exactly what I'm thinking, man. Now, Mm. um, just like the last time, unfortunately, their human side came out a little too strong. And again, they got too big for their britches, you know, with the greed and the corruption, all that shit. Okay, now that is, of course, the human side of the hybrid coming out. And I don't know if it's through interacting with neighboring humans, like actual humans, and they absorb their tendencies or whatever. But uh, let's just say the aliens were like, okay, experiment failed. This one fucked up, too. And naturally, they destroy the their own creation, their own experiment and the whole island to wipe any evidence of them be ever ever being on earth and their entire bloodline right and all we have is plato's account of seeing that happen or whatever the fuck well he didn't see it because it was like almost ten thousand years before his writing oh right 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 uh what i'm getting at is that it's not true um i think it's literally plato made it up as the way to tell a story and i think the story was effective but it being the time of myth People started to be like, well, maybe it's real. And, you know, there's a fast if it's if the story of Atlantis survived past some random dude's ramblings like, you know, it's going to there was some there was a uh, um, not a commotion about it. But like, you know, people like the story. It was a, it's a cool idea. Underwater city that might still be out there. It captured people's imaginations and stuff like that. And I feel like the fact that we can source it back to one guy and there's not like, you know, d- evidence of like the story of Atlantis of Atlantis being destroyed or Atlantis sinking, like unless it got wiped out by whatever the fuck I just, I don't know, man. Look, if it was aliens that destroyed Atlantis, they probably annihilated the shit out of that Island so bad that it's unrecognizable for what we'd be looking for, for a sunken civilization. In my opinion, well, then at that point, why does it even matter? Like, what's so great about it? Be, the, it <laughs> a whole civilization <laughs> helped or created by extraterrestrials that uh, fell due to their own corruption and was destroyed by their maker. What isn't cool about that? What isn't important <laughs> about that? We need to f- at least see if we can scrounge up anything. Anything. I don't know. It just feels a little too far-fetched. I think to me... If there was supposedly a city that sank under the ocean, I'm a, it wouldn't exist anymore. It's it's too long. The ocean would have broken it apart. We don't have like the metals we have today, and even the metals today wouldn't have lasted that long under the ocean. It would have been grown over. And the idea of well, aliens vaporized it down to its atoms, so it's just it's gone forever. A little little convenient. Little, uh, little too easy. Well, I'm not saying that they did that, but I'm saying, you know, it's crumbled and it's, you know, there's no, like maybe no standing pillars that look recognizable as a man-made structure anymore. Yeah. I guess. Okay. A different angle at this is, okay. Um, Atlantis probably like, what would be the benefit to finding Atlantis? Like what, what, where's the benefit? If we find Atlantis and we find evidence of help from a higher power, I will quit everything that I do, and I'm sure almost every other human on this earth would, because like I've said before, the day we know that aliens are 110% real is the day that nothing matters anymore. So Atlantis doesn't have like a treasure. It doesn't have like a secret sauce or rock or something. It's more about proving that aliens existed. For me, that's what it is. I think for other people, it's existing. There's two things. I think one is because people just want to know. People need to know the answer to this. Historians, mystery nerds, all those types of people. The second yeah. is possibly to see if any more of that uh, or a calcum uh, metal is still there to mine because that's supposed to be some mythological, mystical metal shit. I see. So it's just mostly a if you discover it, it would just be like pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> like I said, I would drop everything that I do and know and love and worship aliens in a robe for the rest of my life, knowing they're real. That's how cool. Oh, pretty sure you do that already. Right. Except instead of a robe, it's just in the nude. Right. But this time I can do it out on the streets in a robe and I can become the first alien monk for whatever species uh-huh. it was. That's why it's cool. That's why we need to know what's going on down there. Yeah, that's why you're stocking up on stale bread and stuff and buying your your assorted beanies. Yeah, I'm fucking I'm going to go out on a ship. I'm going to I'm going to fish for crabs uh for sustenance, go full carnivore again, just eat fish and crab and uh uh-huh. and I will search the depths of the oceans with a stick in order to find Atlantis. <laughs> Sounds very um efficient and uh, I wish you luck. Um I don't know. I feel like uh, I don't think it's real. I think it's I think it's a myth. It just sounds like a Greek god myth. But like you said, then we get to the argument of were the Greek gods just that like myths or were they in fact based on actual possible extraterrestrial experiences that ancient people might have had and then passed down? Yes. <laughs> or maybe it's just people just trying to explain the world around them when we didn't have science because all we had was stories and what better way to explain nature that you didn't understand but oh yeah the giant man in the sky's angry that's why we we still don't have science remember everything that we know is is made up and fabricated man just like the myths so it could very well be true oh yeah we could also say everything's relative and everything is pointless but you know, that just completely just devoids life of all meaning. And it's like, sure, yeah, you could live in the void and die like a dog or you could discover your own meaning and stuff like that. And if your your own meaning is fucking Zeus was an alien and Atlantis is out there, fucking you, you want go for it. First off, thank you. I will. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> life has no meaning. Right. We are just. Oh, yeah. We are just cells. We are just cells hanging out here until we are not hanging out here anymore. That's pretty much what's going down. Everything is fake. Oh, yeah. No, the meaning of life is the meaning you give it because there is no meaning to it. And the fact and if you embrace that void, it's just, yeah, then you just fucking waste your your breath and your living cycle. But how about instead of that, we just have the most fun and the best time that we can possibly have as a creature with consciousness and just, you know, just have a make a day out of it, you know? Yeah, and we can we can make up stuff called science and look down on people who don't believe in made up shit called science. Oh, that sounds like a real fun way time to a uh, way to spend my existence here is being made fun of by elitists. You know what I mean? Yep. Consciousness and thinking's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's not waste it. Yeah, let's not waste it, guys. Let's go out there and look for Atlantis. Come on, let's go get it. <laughs> wow, that was uh that was very uh, beachy and fun. Yeah, man, that's our that's our end of summer back to school, back to school special. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's pretty much it, huh? Any any other last thoughts about all this? Nope, nope. I yeah. I mean, it's pretty much it's cut and dry. You don't believe in it, and I sure as fuck do. Yeah, pretty. This is a clear disagree type episode, and um, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a it's about hard time we had some more conflict on the show. Yeah, I think so too, man. Nothing gets my blood boiling more than uh, fucking <laughs> indifference and closed mindedness. Nothing quite like it, though. But at some point, though, we see we got to get the conflict out of our system because when the time comes to unite against Count Chocula, once that episode drops, um, we we cannot we can spare no expense. Like we got to be on the same page. When I say duck, you got to duck. When you say um, pull your pants down, I just got to do it. Yeah, because you never know why I'm asking you to do it. It could be to yep. save your life, man. And it might just be the thing. Like, who knows? Maybe there's something you know that I don't that, like, you know, uh, Count Chocula has a weakness against scrotums. I don't know. Yeah, Count Chocula is homophobic. So if he sees your wiener, he's going to run away. Exactly. Yeah, because he'll just be a lot. Like, you know, he'll take it. It's just just, it shocks him too much. You know, he can't take it. That's how that's how deep it goes. Exactly, man. So don't worry when Count Chocula strikes and he will, you and I will have to come to some sort of agreement. But until then, right, I refuse. Yeah, got to get it out of our systems. You know, we'll we'll figure it out as we go. That's half the point of the show. So but Count Chocula episodes coming soon. Uh, We're working on it and it'll it'll be coming in a little bit. 
Uh, but till then, if you're listening on iTunes, if you could five star rate and review, that would be fantastic. Or Spotify, uh, you could click the follow button and you'll get updates of our new episodes that come out every single Wednesday. That's hump day, middle of your week to make it through the rest of your work week, we hope. Uh, Instagram is at CEOTPK. Our YouTube is Close Encounters of the Podcast Kind. Our Twitter is at CEOTPK1. Uh, Facebook is Close Encounters of the Podcast Kind. You can email us at CEOTPK1 at gmail.com. Our Discord is discord.gg slash lowercase b, number six, capital C, capital T, number five, capital M, capital X. If that's super tedious, uh, go to our Facebook. We'll have all of these links right there, nice, easy, and dandy. Uh, if you feel the need to donate, we do have a coffee, ko-fi.com slash CEOTPK. And um, if you want to add a little message that you want us to read out loud in the show, we'll gladly do so. Yes, just no racial slurs, all right? Like you, right. like maybe some easy ones. Like maybe you could do like, or you could do like, I don't know, you could, whatever. No. I mean, I can say that, right? But if there was a lot of jump cuts there, that's because we <laughs> fucking got that shit out. And that's exactly what will happen to your <laughs> donation message if you decide to test us. Yeah, so, but other than that, yes, we'll read whatever you guys want. It could be a meme. It could be a, a, like, a like a death threat. I don't give a fuck. Just do whatever you want. Yeah, it's your money. I mean, hey, you do what you got to do. But um, but again, don't feel the need to donate, guys, because remember, like I say every episode, you listening is the gift in itself. Yep, that it is. And it fills our um, balls with uh, warm cozy. That's it. Okay. Good. <laughs> We're going down a, a path. We don't need to go back to... I'm really tired dude i need to go to bed all right let's end it let's end this shit then because i'm hungry so look whether you guys think atlantis is real or if you're like tasker and you don't and in your your mean and your meanie face the truth is out there yep to all meanie faces out there let's unite up the truth yeah it's not suckers who didn't think to download their college back <laughs> let's try that again Whew. They probably obliterate, obliterated. <laughs> yeah, nice one. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I'm gonna choose a different word. <laughs>